What's going on civilian jeeps, this is Jake here and today we're going to be doing some oil changes. I'm going to do the engine, transmission, transfer case and I'll possibly do the differentials just depending on how much time I have and how long this video is. And uh, you know I'll also take a look at the master cylinder too. And um, so you know behind me is my 1946 CJ2A. It's got the L134, the Borg Warner T90 and the uh, D18 transfer case in it. And you know, I'm gonna be trying to change the fluids on all them. I've had this Jeep for about a year now and I've had to top it off, but I've not really changed the fluids in it. So I feel like it's uh, one of those things I just need to dive right into. And I thought I'd take you guys along. If you're wondering why I'm wearing this suit here, um, my papa passed away recently. So my mamma was going through some of his clothes and she come upon this and she was just gonna throw it away. I was like, no man, I, I dig that. That can be my mechanic suit. It's even got his name right here on it. So, uh, in honor of my papa, today I'm going to be doing some mechanic stuff on my CJ2A. So here is the L134 that I'm going to be starting with. And I'm going to be using Amsoil Synthetic Z-Rod. And it's got the zinc in it. The previous owner used this, so I'm just going to keep using it. Uh, apparently the zinc is good for the internals of the engine. Um, it's going to take about four quarts because uh, it would do five quarts if I had the oil filter. But I've got the Monarch High Low Pump for the snowplow attachment. So I don't run an oil filter. So I just change the oil more frequently and I think it'll be alright according to the old timers. So let's uh, get started. Let's go down to the bottom and let's start draining it. When you get under the engine, the L134 drain plug is right here. I believe it's an inch and an eighth, which I don't have. So I'm going to have to take my crescent wrench and uh, take that out. So while that's draining, I want to show you this plug. This plug's got some uh, sealant on it. So I'm going to clean that plug off, get all the old stuff off of it, and then I'm going to put some of this uh, Permatex thread sealant on it, the red letter, and uh, you know, just ensure that it's not going to leak when I put this back in. So using a wire brush and degreaser, I've got it pretty clean. So I'm just going to put a dab of this sealant on there. We're going to spread that around. Don't take a whole lot of this stuff. Just don't get like carried away with it. So I let it get to like an intermittent drip and then it's gonna wipe off what's left on the bottom of the pan right there. I already put the bolt back in it after it got to a slow drip. And I got it finger tight, so I'm just gonna take my crescent wrench, get it tight, and then maybe go like a quarter of a turn. I mean you don't want this thing like a uh, strongman tight. So I'm going to add this Amsoil into the engine. I'm going to add a few quarts, check it. Uh, you know, when it gets up to the fill mark, obviously that's when you stop on the dipstick. But let's move on to the uh, transmission after this. Moving on to the transmission transfer case. Some people like to take this cross member off just to give a better, better access to it. But I'm just going to take the skid plate off because uh, there's the fill hole for the transmission. Know how well it picks it up but right here is the drain for the transmission and then the transfer case is on the other side so it'd just be a lot easier if i remove this plate okay so that took a little time just because i had to use a box end wrench and i don't have a ratcheting one to take all those off because the way the bolt was and where the transmission was i couldn't get a long enough uh socket in there to actually get to it but now you can see a little better the actual transmission bolt that we're going to need to be taking out so take that out and uh, we're going to let that drain for a little bit and some of the old timers say that there's an orifice or an actual bearing that's a sealed bearing or a non-sealed bearing and sometimes that depending on which bearing you have in the transmission uh, transfer case fluid can actually seep into the transmission so I don't know if that's the case here. Like I said, I've never changed it. So I'm going to take this top one off first and uh, evaluate how much fluid is going to come out of there. So just kind of get an idea of maybe if the transfer case fluid is going into the transmission or not. Oh, by the way, this is the D18 uh, drain right here. You can actually get to it at the uh, bottom of the skid plate. It's got a notch cut out for it. And you can drain it without taking the skid plate off. 
but <clears throat> you pretty much have to take a skid plate off for the transmission. So I'm going to go ahead and drain this. And I'll be refilling it with 80W90, 80 late 90, um, because the uh, GL1 is what you want to use because it's easier on the brass internals in here. GL5 is what we're going to be using for the uh, differentials. But so you need 80W90, GL1, and some type of pump to get it up in there. I'll show you what I got the original owner. Or not the original owner, the owner that was before me got this and it's it's pretty sweet. It's an old pump, it's old uh, drum style and you just pump the mineral wool into the transmission transfer case. Well I took the top fill plug bolt out and it actually didn't overflow so there wasn't too much fluid in there. You can see nothing's coming out of it and I stuck my finger down in there and the fluid looks pretty good so I kind of hate to change it because it's right there at the fill mark where I'm going to be putting it back to. The amount of fluid I'm going to put in this thing is literally I'm going to fill it all the way up till it comes out of the hole there and then put the plug in. I'm going to do the same thing for the transfer case. There are specs on this, but you know, if the specs, uh, it, it, it will, if you put the spec in it, start coming out of the hole. So, I mean, that's the easiest thing for me in my mind is uh, don't worry about measuring it out. Just go to it until it starts coming out the hole. That's the same thing I do in the CJ7. So, I'm going to go back over here to this side and actually drain the transmission fluid into the paint. Well, that fluid looks really, really good and really fresh, so I'm kind of kicking myself. I'm pretty sure that has already been changed pretty recently. So that did not need to be done. I'm still gonna do it though, just to give me peace of mind. But uh, that's some pretty good looking fluid. So I cleaned the bottom bolt off and put the new thread sealant on it. And I'm just going to turn it until it's snug. And then I'm going to go a quarter of a turn more. You don't want to over tighten this. Just because that would lead to possibly cracking the case of the transmission. Because these are tapered bolts. So. Just snug her up. And go a quarter of a turn more. So here's my old container. It's pretty neat. You can see on the front, 90, 90 weight oil. It's got the pump. I got it up in the transmission fill plug right now. And we're just gonna pump till this thing starts overflowing out of the fill hole. And that's when you know to stop and put thread sealing on the plug down there and put it back in and then we'll move on to the transfer case. Now next we're gonna come over here to the D18 and that fuel plug right there take it out and see if there's any excess in it and then go ahead and drain the d18 down there on the bottom and uh, we'll see what we got and some of you are probably thinking you know i got a lot of leaks why don't i fix those and you know i will once i figure out exactly where it's leaking but you know honestly i would be kind of more concerned if the jeep wasn't leaking because then i'd be worried if it didn't have fluid in it <laughs> so I'm going to uh, get some degreaser after this and uh, just degrease everything and see if I can figure out where the leaks might actually be coming from. Well, I finally got this bolt out up here. And, you know, that's another good reason why you should always start with the top because there's a chance you might not be able to get it out. And that bolt was extremely, extremely tight. So make sure you start to take the top off to check to see if you can even get it off before you drain the bottom. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a uh, surprise when you drain the bottom and can't get the top bolt out. So that, that turned into a big issue. So make sure you try that. Now, none come out, but I did stick my finger down there. And just like the transfer case, I mean the transmission, the transfer case looks to be good as well. Uh, I think this was changed relatively not that long ago. But, I mean, just for instructional purposes and to make me feel better, I'm going to go ahead and change it. So this is the uh, 3 8 drive. That's the bolt that you're going to need to take it out. The others have just been square bolts for crescent wrenches. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Shame to drain it. Well, I put the drain plug back in with the new sealant on it. Everything's been drained into the pan and I've got my rig set up there and I'm just 
gonna pump this in until it starts coming out the top and then I'm gonna put the bolt back in and uh, we're gonna call it that for the engine transfer case and transmission fluids okay so it's coming out I'm just gonna let it drip till it's uh, level with the actual bolt hole and then I'm gonna put the bolt back in it okay now we're at the uh, T25 in the front we're gonna change it the actual drain is down here on the bottom make sure you take this bolt out first to make sure you can get it out and this is a high point oil oil you want to use the uh, 80 90 the gl5 instead of the gl1 that we used in the uh, transmission transfer case I got my gear oil and I put a spout on it. It just helps it get down into the hole. So let's go ahead fill this up until it comes out of the fill plug. As you can see, it's spewing out. So now I need to take the bolt, put it back in. So I tightened it up with the crescent wrench, snugged it up, went about a quarter more turn, and then uh, I'm not going to show you the rear. The rear is the same thing, so uh, I'll save you from the boredom of doing the same process over again. But just do the same thing for the rear, and that's how you change the uh, fluids in your differentials. Now, obviously, if it was leaking, I would have to take this cover off and um, actually change the gasket out, but neither the front nor rear leak so there's no real reason to take the cover off so it's just an easy way of draining it and filling it back up all right well the fluids have been changed the engine transmission transfer case front and rear uh, differential fluid now if you want to check your master cylinder there's a peep down here in the floor you take off these bolts here in this peep hole and you can uh, see the master cylinder through that hole and there'll be a nut on top of it uh, kind of like the ones we've been taking off of the transfer case and just uh, screw that off and you will want the fluid to be about the bottom of the thread so if you want to check that or need to replace that that's how you get to your master cylinder now if you want to change the oil in the oil bath here at the very bottom of this filter is where the oil sets. Um, I, I do need to do that. I don't know that I'll get to that today. So I've been told to use SAE 30 uh, oil, but I know some people that also use 50. I'm really not sure what the uh, benefit or difference is between the two. But that would be what you do on the oil bath filter. Um, on the engine coolant, uh, you can flush it and then put new in. It's just the standard, the green stuff, half and half. Um, don't fill it all the way up because as you can see, there's no drain bottle like uh, the newer vehicles have. So you want to fill it up to um, the level for which it won't spill, spill out of the cap. Um, it just takes a little time. I myself don't even know exactly where that level's at. I'm going to have to play around with it, but don't fill it all the way up to this cap. As far as fluids go, that's about it. I'm going to change the spark plugs, which that's pretty pretty standard. Uh, they're gapped to 30, so I'm not going to put that in this video. But I'm going to change the spark plugs. And I also need to do a head gasket because on the other side of this block, it uh, likes to leak a little bit. It just bubbles up right on the edge down there. So eventually I'm going to do a head gasket on this thing. And I uh, need to address the Ross steering box down there. Um, there's a lot of play in the steering wheel, so I don't even really get this thing on the road. But other than that, that's about all the fluids besides the Monarch pump here, but that's something that's aftermarket. I don't know that your standard CJ2A most likely wouldn't have this. That needs hydraulic fluid. Uh, another thing that I could top off fluid-wise would be my, uh, more, my Ramsey 8,000-pound winch back here. It needs hydraulic fluid. Uh, not many people would have that either so as far as like your standard CJ2A I've went over about all the fluids um, now obviously the one fluid that'd be left is the gas uh, I mean I use non-ethanol there's a gas station a quarter of a mile down the road from me that has ethanol fuel so that's what I use in this thing 
but as far as uh, any of the other fluids, that's about it. Now, I know I'm sure some old timers are going to be like, man, you didn't do that right. It's this step needs to be done differently or that. I don't know. So I'm sure there's some, some going to be somebody that critiques me down in the comments. And, you know, most likely listen to them. <laughs> so I'm not claiming to be like some master mechanic here. This is just stuff that I found out through research and uh, just doing it myself and working on my CJ7 here. So I do have a little bit of experience, but I'm not a master mechanic. So if there's some old timer down there telling you to do it a different way, I mean, you might want to follow up and do it, do it their way. So anyway, hope you uh, like this. If you like this video and want to see more con content on just civilian Jeeps and maybe even the 2A back there, then uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, like my video if you liked it. But, you know, when it comes to Jeeps, keep it classy.